So how do you handle the blows? How do you how do you plow through the setbacks? How do you take the hits? Today we're going to attack that all together and I promise you, this week we're going to attack it. I promise you, if you stay with me this week, we're going to turn you into an absolute pro. That's cool. We just take the hits. We keep on rolling. I don't know why it wasn't showing the video part there for just a second, but at least we had the music there, right? And I'd rather get the glitches out of the way now because at 1030, I need things to go smooth with my man, Grant Cardone. Listen, I'm going to give you six things today. We're going to focus on like the sales side of things. If you're in sales, which most people are, they don't even recognize that you're in sales, but we're always having to sell something. We got to sell ourselves to our wives. We got to sell our kids on an idea of why they should implement certain strategies in their life. Obviously, we, we sell cars, we sell products, we sell items, we sell our bosses on giving us promotions, right? All of us are in sales in some way, shape, or form. And so we're going to dive into sales a little bit today. We're going to talk about leadership uh, tomorrow. We're going to kind of break this down over a period of four days, how we can really level up in your career, how you can take the hits in your business and keep on plowing through. So first things first, I wanna start with handling the no's. Anytime you run into um, anytime when you're dealing with sales or anything like that, you're going to run into rejection. You're going to run into no's. I got my start at this company called Sterner and Klein. And at Sterner and Klein, it was my job. This is when I was 20 years old. It was my job to call people who had canceled their America online service. I had to call them and get them to reactivate their accounts. Now, what this meant is they typically canceled because they didn't like their service. It was awful. It was dial up. It was slow. And then America Online had typically billed them like a million more times because they used to make it really hard to cancel and they just recurringly bill. And so I would call these people. I'd say, hey, what's up? I'm calling. You had America Online. I want to get you reactivated. And they would dog cuss me left and right, right? They would dog catch me left and right to the point where I actually had to create an alias. I created an alias. My name was Mike Jetta. That was my name on the phones. I'd say, hey, hello, this is Mike Jetta calling for America Online, right? I had to create this alias so that when they cussed out Mike Jetta, I could let it roll off my shoulders. You see, when they were cussing out Mike Jetta, they weren't cussing out Glenn Lundy. It was the only way that I could cope with taking the hits, the rejection and the no's and not taking it personally. And you see, that's the key. As you get rejections in your life and as your career, as you are, as you're getting hit by all of the no's, you cannot take this personally. You see, my friend, when somebody doesn't buy from you, when somebody doesn't agree with you, when somebody doesn't decide to do business with you, right? When that doesn't happen, you have to understand and have the mindset that they lost, not you. I want to reverse that. Make sure you hear that. I want you to have the mindset that they lost, not you. You see, typically we go into, well, I lost that deal or I couldn't get that deal. I tried. I put in all these hours and I lost it. No, if somebody doesn't do business with you, they lost. Not you. Because see, what happened when they didn't do business with you is no one would have treated them. No one out there is going to treat them as good as you would have. Right? Right? When somebody doesn't do business with you, this is the mindset I want you in. No one will treat them as good as you would have. No one would have ever treated them better than you do. 
They lost when they didn't buy from you. Now, in order for you to have this mindset, in order for you to believe that, that has to be true. It has to be true that no one would be would treat them better. It would have to be true that that they lost out by not doing business with you. You have to be a skilled professional. You have to be over the top. You have to be the type of person that would deliver in all situations that a relationship with you is beneficial on all sides. That's the only way you can say that. That's the only way you can believe that. That's the only way that that can be real. You've got to level yourself up to where when somebody walks out on you, it's their loss and not yours. That's step one. Keep in mind, everybody says they're the best. Everybody. But very few walk in that. Very few walk in that. Everybody says that I'm the best. I'll treat you better than anybody. We've got the best service around, the best experience. Everybody's the best. Well, only one can be the best. Is it you? Number two. Number two. You have got to make sure that you are shining your light. If you want to make an impact, you want to level up in your career, you need to make sure that you are shining your light. If you need to be able to take the hits and plow on through, you got to shine your light. When I first went to Dan Cummins, it was a bit of a country, or not a country club, it was just old, a little bit old time. They had the wood panels up on the wall and all the salespeople were wearing like car hearts, right? Robbie Toomey's in here, he can testify. They were wearing their car hearts and, and it's just a very relaxed atmosphere. They had some picnic tables that were there in the showroom and so on and so forth. So when I first got to Dan Cummins, they gave me a lot of grief when I was the only guy in a tie. I was the only guy in a tie. I was the only one dressed up like that to the point where my man, Ollie Taylor, Ollie Taylor is one of the old timer sales guys there. He's just an incredible human being. And Ollie Taylor came up to me one day and he said, boy, I'm going to need you to stop wearing that tie around here. I want these owners getting any ideas, right? <laughs> He told me straight up. And then he said, look, and he was joking. Dolly Taylor's an incredible dude. He said, you wear that tie back in here. We might just hang you with it. <laughs> right? And, and, and that's how the mentality was back then. But you know what? I wouldn't let him put out my light. I wasn't going to let him put out my light. I wore my tie. I wore my tie every day because when I strapped that sucker on, I felt something. I felt something special. I felt different. I wanted to stand out. I wanted to make an impact. I wasn't there to be like everybody else. I wasn't there to be average. I wasn't there to just keep cruising at 120 cars a month. That's not why I was there. And so I continued to let my light shine. And by letting my light shine, I was basically staying true to my what? Staying true to my roots, my foundation, and my beliefs. This is what we talked about last week. Staying true to your roots and your foundation and your belief. It's the only way. When your roots are deep, you won't be swayed. When your roots are deep, they can't outgrow you. And when your roots are deep, guess what happens? You start to blossom at the top. If you go to their website now, go to dancummins.com, and what you'll see is you'll see that they have quite a few professionals nowadays that are wearing shirts and ties you'll even see my man sterling leach wearing a little bow tie most likely but you'll see a lot of my my legacy my tie that i refuse to take off has now sprouted as their business has grown they have much more professional look not everybody's wearing a tie some people are just wearing a jacket you know it's just some you know it just depends on you you do you but in order for you to be able to under crunch time right when you're taking the hits when you're taking the hits in order for you to be able to continue to plow through is you got to let your light shine don't let anybody dim your light number three is you're going to run into these things in life called slumps or you're going to call them a slumps right you're going to run into these things called slumps where you're like man i was selling this many now i'm only selling this many or i had a good month but now i had a bad month you're going to go through these like oh that was an awful week i just can't get a customer i can't close a deal so on and so forth right and you're going to go through these slumps and i want you to understand something my man keanu reeves he actually said it best in a movie called the replacements he talked about these slumps and he said it's like quicksand he said, it's just like quicksand. You're, you're playing and everything seems to be going fine. And then all of a sudden, one thing goes wrong. 
and then you try to fight back and another thing goes wrong and as you fight the harder and harder you fight the more things go wrong until all of a sudden you're so deep you just you can't even move you can't breathe you're in over your head and when you reach these points in your career, these levels where you just feel like, I just can't breathe. It doesn't seem like anything I'm doing. Like the more I try, that's when I need you to, look, to, to just understand step three. All right. Energy out equals energy in. Energy out equals energy in. Your energy, your mindset, your positivity, your work ethic, all of those things. That's what we ramp up at a time when we're in a slump. When you're in a slump, when you're having a hard time breaking through, I need you to start feeding yourself everything positive you can find. More videos, more books, more education. I need you making more phone calls, more disciplined on your morning routine. You're going to do more, right? Because energy out equals energy in. Now you might think, okay, well, I just got to call 100 people. No, 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 no. Just calling 100 people isn't going to work. You got to get up a little bit earlier. You're going to have to work out. You're going to have to release this energy. You're going to have to feed the brain. And the more energy you put in, the more energy you're going to get out. It's the weirdest thing. It's the strangest thing. It's why dealerships do little lot parties. We do this lot party, this lot rodeo, because all the activity and energy, it generates something universally that will draw customers in. Isn't that weird? It's crazy, but it works. If you're starting to run through a slump, remember, it's like quicksand. You can't just get angry about it and dwell in it and be like, oh, I'm here and it sucks and I'm in a slump and I can't get a customer. Get all those words out of your mouth. Go to your disciplines, go to your routines and do it more. I got to move fast. We're going to run late. I had to though, man. I had to. If you guys don't mind, we're probably going to go three or four minutes over. But Kobe and Brandon, it's just a rough weekend. All right. Number four, everything is an opportunity. Okay. I want you to write these, write this down if you haven't done so already. Oh my gosh. I got to add that clip. Everything is an opportunity. You have to see this. There it is right there. All right. There was uh, a few years ago, it was February 15, 2015, the news had announced that we were going to have this polar vortex. We were going to have a polar vortex here in Kentucky, and it was going to be like this crazy ice storm, and it was going to be super cold and so on and so forth. And everybody was buying the milk and the water and all that other stuff that people do when there's going to be a storm, and everybody was shutting down their doors and so on and so forth. And we were like, you know what? Here's an opportunity. Everybody else is closed. Everybody else is closed. What we're going to do is we're going to do a one-day winter storm sale. For one day only, you have a chance to save money on a new vehicle unlike any other time in history. $15,000 off new Silverados. We had brand new Malibus for $15,000. We did it for one day and one day only. You had to pick up your car, no deposits, no over the phone. You had to drive through the polar vortex to show up at our store and buy a car. And while everybody else was shut down, we sold 23 new cars that day. Every, everything is an opportunity. You see, you control your own economy. Do not let anything on the outside tell you you can't. Do not let anything on the outside dictate your success. You are in control. This is yours. You own it. Nothing on the outside. Everything's an opportunity. I saw an opportunity. I'm going to NADA for four days. I'm going to NADA uh, Friday through Monday. I'll be out there for all my dealer friends that are going to be out there. I'm speaking on Friday and then I was doing some networking the weekend and I thought, you know what? This might be an opportunity. An opportunity to be, for me to pour into some other dealers, give them some strategies, some tips, some techniques, so on and so forth. So I'm going to hold a workshop while I'm in, while I'm out there in Vegas. I'm just going to do a workshop that Sunday, maybe after the NAD stuff's over, NADA stuff's over. I'm not sure I'm going to set that stuff up with my casino host today, but I'm just going to have a workshop so I can connect so that I can network. It's an opportunity. There ain't no point in just sitting around on the casino floor wasting time. If everybody's in one place at one time, I should connect with them, right? Start thinking every day, everything is an opportunity. How can you twist it, turn it to where you can increase your level, your sales, and your career, all right? Number five, your pipeline has got to be full. Your pipeline has got to be full. 
must be, always. The other day, I was, or about a month ago, I was installing um, a new bathroom downstairs in the basement. I was installing the pipes and hooking up the things, you know, connecting, and I'm not very handy, okay, all right? But I was doing all these different things, and I didn't quite complete it because we had one piece that I had to go back to Lowe's and get the actual fixture, right? And so there was one piece not, and I went back down the next day, and, like, it stunk, right? There was like this smell. I was like, what's going on? And it stunk. And what it was is our pipeline, I hadn't filled any of it with water. And so because I didn't fill the pipeline with a little bit of water to capture the odors, the odor from the sewage was just coming out into my basement and it stunk. Same thing happens in your life, man. If your pipeline is not filled, full if you don't have people circling at the top as leads if you don't have people on the next level as opportunities if you don't have people at another level that are making offers if you don't have people at the next level that are going to be your new customers if you do not have your pipeline full it stinks plain and simple so those of you today that are like, well, I have two appointments, so I'm going to sell hopefully one of those two cars today. Look, I've got to tell you, your pipeline's not full. Your pipeline's not full. You should have seven appointments. And when they overlap on top of each other, or if one of them doesn't show up, or two of them don't show up, or three of them don't show up, or four of them don't show up, you're still going to sell some cars or whatever it is that you sell. You need to be constantly fueling that pipeline. I did a message on this the other day. Saturdays, I see a lot of people standing around on Saturdays waiting because they know customers are going to come in and they're going to sell cars. Saturdays, customers are at home and they're off work too. That should be the day you hit Hit the phones the hardest you should be constantly filling your pipeline whether it be through social media generating leads referrals contacts whatever get to work you want to be a real pro you want to be massively successful get to work number six and last winners create their own luck people that really can take the hits and plow through they create their own luck. I'm going to give you an example. I feel pretty lucky right now. I'm going to be interviewing Grant Cardone at 1030 today. Also next week, I'm getting an opportunity to interview Ed Milet on February 4th. And I know some people are going, oh, Glenn, you're so lucky. You get to interview Grant Cardone and Ed Milet. I'm not lucky. I busted my freaking tail off to get these interviews. Are you kidding me? I busted my freaking tail off. I didn't necessarily bust my tail off to serve Grant Cardone. I didn't bust my tail off to serve Ed Milet. But guess what? I busted my tail off to serve Scott Simons and Steve Spray and a person that I can't tell you about that gave me Ed Milet cell phone number. I busted my tail off to serve those people. Scott had a hand in making sure that Ed Milet would do my show. Scott pushed him over the edge. My buddy Steve Spray had a hand in making sure Grant Cardone would do my show. And Steve Spray helped push him over the edge. See, I busted my tail to get where I'm at today so that I can create a platform for these guys that they would be drawn to by serving people that were connected to them. Now, I didn't do it for that reason. I didn't know serving Scott Simons was going to lead to one day him hooking me up, but I create those opportunities. I create my own luck by busting my tail. So the sixth and last thing that I got to tell you, if you're really, you know, wanting to take the hits and plow on through, bust your freaking tail off. Bust your tail off off and like the quote said at the very beginning of the show aim to serve others you see people need what you've got because you my friend are a child of god the god of the universe the god that made everything made you to be the absolute best version of yourself that you can possibly be best version not an average version not a little bit above average a little bit below but the absolute best version of yourself that you can possibly be. And I know you're making good decisions. You're watching hashtag rise and grind. Hopefully you shared it out. You're inviting your friends. You're waking up early. You're doing the, the morning five. You're taking care of the physical, all that stuff. I know that you're doing these things. I know that you are. And I want to tell you today, I want to make sure that you know that it matters. These decisions that you're making, they matter. 
They do. It impacts your friends, your family members, your coworkers. It makes an impact on me. And if nobody's told you that today, I want to be the first. I absolutely stinking love you for it. Listen, go out, have an amazing Monday. Do me a favor, head over to the GoFundMe right now before you forget, before your day kicks in, will you please go and donate to Brandon Stanhope's family? They need you. They need us. I don't, whether it's $5, $10, $50, I know there's some players in here. We got some players in here. For my players, drop $500, drop $1,000. Let's support this family. They're going to need us. But most importantly, importantly, will you do me a favor? Make sure don't miss me. Even if you can't watch because you're at work, will you just go on at 1030 and then like share it out? So I look good in front of Grant. I'd appreciate that. <laughs> But don't miss us a little bit later. But most importantly, come back here again tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. We're going to do this all over again on hashtag Rise and Grind. This going to be a fun week. You want to level up your career? This is the week. This is the week. I still love you guys. Have an incredible day.